greatest showman. All know right. That. Thank you. you know oh, thank you. Thanks, everybody. How about that? Back. Thank you very much, Paul. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm glad you folks are uh, here tonight, and I'm glad you're in such a, a pleasant mood because yeah. uh, I have a little story that I would like to tell you and uh, the home viewers as well. Do you feel like a story? Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this started uh, three weeks ago uh, yesterday, and uh, I, got up, uh, I get up early and I come to work early, and I go out and I get into my car, and in the, the back seat of my car is a, a package I, I don't recognize and have never seen before and, and don't usually receive packages six in the morning in the back of my car. <laughs> I, I guess you can. I guess some people do. <laughs> so uh, I get to, to looking uh, through it and uh, there's a, a letter uh, in the package and it's, uh, it says that uh, uh, I know that you do some terrible, terrible things. <laughs> And I can prove that you do these terrible things. And sure enough, contained in the package was stuff to prove that I do terrible things. <laughs> uh, at six in the morning, and maybe it, this looks better to you at noon. <laughs> but, but six in the morning, all you can think about is every terrible thing you've ever done in your entire life. <laughs> so uh, I uh, go through it and I study it, and what this is, is a, a guy is going to write a screenplay about me. And, you know, it, that's good news for anyone, isn't it, really? <laughs> oh, no. And he's going to take all of the terrible stuff that he knows about my life, and he seems to, in this packet, uh, there seems to be quite a lot of terrible stuff he knows about. <laughs> And he's going to put it into a, a movie uh, unless I give him some money. Yeah. I'm like you. I think, really? That, that's a little, and this is the word I actually used, that's a little hinky. <laughs> um, so so I, I just want to reiterate how terrifying this moment is because there's something very insidious about is he standing down there? Is he hiding under the car? <laughs> am I, am I going to get a tap on the shoulder? Mm. You immediately, because I, I'm motivated by nothing but guilt. If you know anything about me, <laughs> I, I am just a towering mass of Lutheran <laughs> Midwestern guilt. Uh -uh. So, <clears throat> well, thank you. So I, I get to the office and I say to myself, uh, I hate doing things like this, but maybe I'll call my attorney. So I call my attorney uh, and uh, he takes a look at it and he says, well, let's, let's schedule a meeting with the guy just to see what he has in mind. So there, there's a meeting with the guy and uh, it turns out, yes, in fact, he wants a, a large sum of money or he's going to produce this uh, screenplay of all the terrible things that I do. I embarrassing, terrible things. <laughs> So, uh, at that point, my attorney and I say, wow, this really is hinky. <laughs> so then we call uh, a, uh, an operation called the Special Prosecution Bureau, which is a division of the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. We, we call down there and we say, can we run a couple of things by you guys? <laughs> and so we took the stuff down there and they said, whoa, hello, this is blackmail. Um, so they said, what you want to do is get an, another meeting with this guy, find out if he's serious. Because, you know, we all have a bad day and stuff like this <laughs> slip through the cracks. You know, you, you've inadvertently blackmailed someone in. <laughs> Uh, so they have the second meeting, uh, and, and the question was posed, now, do you, are you aware that this is serious, this is a, 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 could be a crime, and, you know, is there, no, no, it's fine, I'm fine with that, and oh, by the way, <clears throat> not only am I writing a screenplay, I'm writing a, a book. So I thought, well, that's nice, you have a companion piece, you have the film, <laughs> and, and you have the book, and, you know, what do you, what do you read the book first, then go to the film, do you watch the film, then you read the book, do you take the book and read along at the film? 
it's, it's all coming up roses for me now. B because remember, this guy knows creepy stuff about me. So they had the second meeting and he was reassured that everything uh, was just fine. And uh, then a third meeting is arranged. And, and uh, if there's a lighthearted moment in any of this, and I'm not sure there really is, the third meeting, the third meeting is arranged whereby he's uh, given uh, the check. Now, I, I don't think I've mentioned the amount up till now, but he was uh, asking uh, $2 million. Wow. That was, was that the foreigners? <laughs> so the check is turned over, uh, two million dollars, and, and because I'm such a bonehead, you ever seen like a, a golf tournament where they have the giant check when the guy wins it? <laughs> but I, I couldn't talk him into that. No. <laughs> uh, and now, so now this guy is uh, walking around New York City with a, a, a phony check for $2 million. And, and the, the idea is now, uh, although he's given no guarantees, he's still saying, well, you, you know, you never know. I may just go ahead and write the books. I may just still go ahead and write the screenplay. So for that uh, guarantee, he's got a phony check for $2 million. So <clears throat> this, this morning I did something I've never done in my life. And, and it was a, a, a combination of just unusual and, 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 and scary. The, this whole thing has been quite scary. Uh, I had to go downtown to the, uh, testify before the grand jury. Yeah. And uh, I had to tell them how I, I was disturbed by this. I was worried for myself. I was worried for my family. Uh, I, f I felt menaced by this. Uh, and I had to tell them uh, all of the creepy things that I have done that were going to be... <laughs> well, now, why is that funny? That's, I mean... So, uh, so the idea is, is if they uh, believe, in fact, a crime has been committed, then they issue a warrant, and that's exactly what happened. And uh, a little bit after noon today, the guy was arrested. Ah. Now... <clears throat> Now, of course, <clears throat> we get to what was it, what was all the creepy stuff <laughs> that he was going to put into the, the screenplay and, and the movie. And uh, the creepy stuff was that I have uh, had sex with women who work for me on this show. Now, my response to that is, yes, I have. <laughs> I have had sex with women who work on this show. And, and would it be em embarrassing if it were made public? Perhaps it would. Perhaps it would. Es especially for the women. Um, uh, but that's a decision for them to make if they want to come public and talk about uh, the relationships. If I want to go public and talk about the relationships. But what you don't want is a guy saying... Oh, I know, I know you had sex with women, so I, 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 I would like $2 million, or I'm, I'm going to make trouble for you. So that's where we stand right now. Um, I just want to thank the people at the Special Prosecution Bureau and the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, uh, Robert Morgenthau, who is uh, uh, head of that. It's, uh, it's been a very bizarre experience. Uh, I feel like I need to protect these people. I need to certainly protect my family. I need to protect myself, uh, hope to protect my job, uh, and the friends, uh, everybody that uh, has been very supportive through this. Uh, and I don't plan to say much more about this on this particular topic. So thank you for letting me bend your ears. Here. And now... I, I know what you're saying. Won't well, be darn Dave's had sex. <laughs> that's, that's what the grand jury said also. <laughs> really? You've had sex? Uh, 
All right. Uh, now what do we do? I guess we do a thing. Uh, thank you again for your patience. We'll be right back with Woody Harrelson. Ladies and gentlemen.